the Lord be with you and also with you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all indeed to this, our online service for Advent Sunday in the Cranmer Group of Parishes. I'm the Reverend Tim Chambers, if you haven't yet come across me. I'm the vicar of the six uh, villages that form our benefice. It's great to have you with us this morning. We'll begin our service today with the lighting of the first candle in our Advent wreath. Sue Isherwood from Aslockton has very kindly made the wreath for us this year and uh, she is going to be lighting that first candle for us in St Thomas's Church. Thank you Sue. Thank you, Sue. We join together in prayer with the Collect for Advent Sunday from Common Worship. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Deb Hubbard is now going to lead us in our first hymn, the wonderful Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Deb. Caroline Coulter is now going to read to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. 
Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Thank you, Caroline, for reading for us. Lord, I pray that you will be in my words and in our hearts and minds this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today, Advent Sunday, is the start of the new church year. This year doesn't begin on Christmas Day with the birth of Jesus Christ, the coming to life, the incarnation of our Lord and Saviour. It doesn't begin on Easter Day, as might easily be thought, although of course that Resurrection Day is the day from which every day thereafter is made new. Nor does it begin at Pentecost, although many people refer to that celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on God's people as the birthday of the Church. Instead, the Church year begins in the dark and the cold in a time and a place, so it seems, of emptiness, of exile, of desolation even. The time that we know as Advent. The words of Isaiah speak to us across the centuries, from such a time and place then, and into such a time and place now, perhaps especially this coronavirus year. Isaiah is a deeply complex book, prophetic, poetic, united by a series of common themes, but which biblical scholars now generally think was written not by one hand, the Isaiah son of Amos, uh, to whom uh, he refers in uh, the very first verse of the book but by three or four distinct hands who lived uh, from the 8th to the 6th centuries BC in distinctly different contexts, into each of which they particularly speak. The part of Isaiah from which this morning's reading comes is what's generally thought of as the third of these voices, from the period in the history of the people of God after Jerusalem had been sacked and its population taken forcibly into slavery in Babylon. Some of the nation is still there in Babylon, but many have now been permitted to return to their historic home, the Promised Land, but under conditions that are deeply impoverished, both economically and spiritually. Those still in Babylon remain physically in exile. Those who've returned to their former homes are nonetheless in a deep state of psychological exile. I wonder whether there is a profound resonance in the situation that confronted this third Isaiah with our own in this pandemic year of 2020. 
we find ourselves in what looks to most intents and purposes like the same home that we've inhabited over preceding years. But at the same time, the landscape around us has shifted so radically. The assumptions underlying our lives have been torn up so utterly that we too are actually in exile. Exiles in our own time and place. Into such exile, the words of Isaiah speak as he cries out to the Lord. Our reading is the second part of a lament to God, a prayer, even though it perhaps might immediately look like one, a prayer that begins in chapter 63. The author pleads with the Lord for himself and for the people of God. Lord, I'm tired of trying to justify your anger with the people. I know that your people uh, have turned away from you and your ways. They've nothing to offer you, but they never did. But you love them anyway. Come down, O Lord, he writes. Come down in the way that you did in the time of our forefathers, when you met with Moses on Mount Sinai. Come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways, Isaiah continues. To paraphrase his words, we know what we've done wrong, Lord, and still you stay silent. We're starting to think that maybe um, you're not only punishing us by your silence when we cry out to you, but you're actually absent from our land, our nation, our lives. Lord, maybe we're even beginning to give up on you. Things have become so bad. We're broken, O oh God, and you've hidden your face from us. And yet, you're still our Father. We're still your people, Lord. And yet. In perhaps the most traditional of the ways in which the four Sundays of Advent are marked by the Church, on this first Sunday we read of and reflect upon the people of God and their relationship with him as told in Scripture on our relationship with him. On the other three, we consider the prophets, then John the Baptist, and then finally Mary, mother of Jesus. And we, of course, light a candle for each of them, as we've done this morning, as we progress through this Advent month of waiting. But on this, the first Sunday, we see in our reading the nature of God through his interactions with his people. His character is revealed not only in what he does or does not do, but also from the way in which Isaiah and the rest of God's people in that time of exile speak to him and respond to his actions or inaction. First of all, God is revealed as being mighty. He has the capacity to rend the heavens, to cause the mountains to tremble, the nations to quake. Secondly, the God of whom Isaiah writes is a God who is holy. Where the Lord has withdrawn from acting on behalf of those who wait for him to do so, it's because of the sin of the people of Israel. They've turned away from the ways he prescribed for them to live their lives good ways. So in his righteousness, he has hidden himself from them. So first of all, God is revealed in this time of absence and waiting as mighty. Secondly, God is holy, righteous in how he distances himself from his sinful people. And thirdly, God is just and merciful. Isaiah knows that the Lord has distanced himself from the people precisely because they have strayed from his ways and because they have acted unjustly. 
But Isaiah also knows that the Lord's anger is not beyond measure, that he will look upon them once again, and that he shapes each one of us with skill, with care and with love, as a potter shapes the clay on his wheel or her wheel. So, as he petitions the Lord, Isaiah knows how God has acted for his people in the past. He knows that God, despite everything that his people have done, remains faithful to them. He continues to come to the help of those who gladly do right. And Isaiah has faith that even though God's people are still waiting for him to act for them once more, they continue all to be his people and he will act for them all again. This is the message of Advent, God's words to his people, as Isaiah wrote over two and a half millennia ago. And as we come to this season of waiting now, today. Israel was waiting for its salvation in the person of the Messiah the heir to King David, who would once again bring peace and healing to that land. We, of course, in our particular exile, this extraordinary year, we are waiting for the vaccine to take us out of our current time of darkness. But we too are waiting for the Messiah. We wait firstly in eager anticipation uh, for the season of Christmas in which we celebrate the coming to the earth of the Christ child, the Son of God, Lord and Saviour from all our sins. And we wait too as the disciples of this same Jesus Christ for the day in which he will come to his earth once again in judgment to reconcile creation to himself once and for all. We wait, knowing that God's Advent message to each one of us is not yet, but and yet. And yet, because despite all the darkness which we see around us, there shines a light, the light of the world, the light that is Jesus Christ. The light that, as we place our lives under his care and under his authority, the light that has capacity to bring us hope, to bring us healing, to bring us reconciliation, to bring us freedom, to bring us joy and to bring us love. As we journey towards Bethlehem's manger over the coming weeks. We do so acknowledging the brokenness of this world around us. We lift its pains and its sorrows to our Heavenly Father in prayer, and we ask him for his forgiveness for our part in perpetuating them. But we do so too, secure in the knowledge that in the person of the one born in that stable, God with us, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, has given us an eternal and yet. Come down, O Lord, come to your people. O come, O come, thou day spring bright, pour on our souls thy healing light. Dispel the long night's lingering gloom and pierce the shadows of the tomb. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll lead us now in a brief meditation in response to this uh, scripture and these reflections. Let's focus in the flame of our first Advent candle on the light of the world, Jesus Christ, inviting him in response to each of our petitions. Lord, come down. 
do please join in at home with these responses as well. Into our emptiness, into our brokenness, Lord, come down. Into our loneliness, into our neediness, Lord, come down. Into our busyness and our distractedness, Lord, come down. Into our chaos and our unsettledness, Lord, come down. Into our shallowness and our small-mindedness, Lord, come down. Into our past and into our present, Lord, come down. Into our future with all its uncertainty, Lord, rend the heavens and come down. For those on the margins and all the forgotten, Lord, come down. For those in the dark and those in despair, Lord, come down. Into our world with all its unsettledness, Lord, come down. In places of war and violence and conflict, Lord, come down. In all of our darkness, send us your light. Break forth the daylight, banish the night. Lord, rend the heavens and come down. Jules Humpherson will now lead us in our Advent intercessory prayers. Thank you, Jules. Everlasting God, as we come before you at the start of the season of Advent, we ask you to prepare us for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to hear us when we pray in faith for the needs of the Church and the world, and to thank you for your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your Church today, gathering all around the world in tiny churches, great cathedrals, and like us, in their own homes to praise you and to hear your holy word. Give us a sense of expectation as we start and inspiration as we finish. We pray for your blessing on all those who preach and teach the message of your salvation. We pray especially for Tim as he seeks to do your will and guides us through our spiritual and worldly journeys. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, drive away despair from our politics, revive our dreams of justice and truth, and restore our passion for what is good and right. Establish your just and gentle rule throughout the world, especially where there is conflict, where peace seems so far away and so many have lost everything. Even the faint hope of a peaceful future. Govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority that they may act justly, honestly and according to your will, especially at this time of the global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those amongst our families, friends and neighbours who will only see in Advent a hectic and worrying run-up to the excesses of a secular Christmas. Help us as we try to set an example of a true spirit of preparation for that incredibly precious gift of the Christ child. May they see in our services, our carols and Christingles, whether in church or online, the true meaning of, of Christmas and experience your love for them through the giving of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those for whom this day will be long and painful, for those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, and for all who care for them. Comfort and heal all who suffer 
especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have recently died and for those for whom this day will be their last. Be near to all who mourn and comfort them with the knowledge that in the coming of your Son, Jesus, the gates of heaven will be opened wide for all who accept him as Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we end our service today, Advent Lord, come nearer. Come to rejuvenate our faith, come to fortify our social conscience, come to widen our eyes of wonder, so that when our Saviour comes, he may steal into our hearts and find them ready. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We join together now in the Collect for today, for Advent Sunday, from the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. Deborah Davis is now going to lead us in our final hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. Thank you, Deborah.
bring our service to a close in a moment with a formal blessing. But before I do that, a couple of quick notices. First of all, as I've mentioned previously, Katie Senior has been organising uh, catalogues for Tradecraft, uh, the fantastic um, Christian uh, organisation that supports producers throughout the world of crafts and foodstuffs, perfect for Christmas presents. Um, Katie has catalogues still available if you wish to get some last minute presents or cards from them. Uh, her contact details will be on the screen at the very end of this online service this morning. Alternatively, however, Katie will also, but you'd be cutting it a bit fine probably by this stage, Katie will also be at our service, uh, our first service back in church buildings uh, at St John of Beverley Watton, which is next Sunday, the 6th of December at 10 a.m. Do join us there and Katie will have her, uh, her little tradecraft um, stall be able to um, chat to you about uh, catalogues and the stuff that they have available after the service then. Also next Sunday, uh, as we did uh, at the beginning of November, uh, we'll be having an informal prayer gathering in St Thomas's as Lockton at 8pm. So that's this coming Sunday, the 6th of December. Do please join us for that as well. We look forward to seeing you either in the morning at Watton or in the evening for prayer at as Lockton. A closing blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Go well, be blessed, and if you're watching this on Sunday morning, do join us on Zoom at 10.45 for a catch-up with your friends from across the Cranmer Group. Go well.